for instance, um, the culture of Sparta, sodomy was a regular practice and the Bible condemns sodomy. But not just sodomy between man and boy or man and man. The Bible condemns sodomy in all of its forms and that includes between man and woman. And the reason why the Bible condemns sodomy is because sodomy goes against the point of sex. Sex is about bringing new life into the world. It's about celebrating and opening ourselves to what God wants to do in that sacrament by opening ourselves that God might give you a soul to raise in his way amongst his people. And the evidence is there in nature, it all points towards procreation. And yes, the reward of sex is pleasure. And yes, sex should be pleasurable. So get good at it so that your wife or your husband can enjoy it and look after yourself physically so that your wife or your husband can enjoy your body because your body is a gift to your partner so look after it and keep in shape but remember God is the one that gave us sex and God is the one who defines how we should use it any other questions on the topic sorry Perfect world. Do I be We're living in an unperfect world. Yes. And sometimes a man or a woman, they born like that and they cannot help themselves. Right. A man cannot help himself sleep with the next man and a woman cannot help themselves because they're genetically born with Okay, with that. so let, let me reply to that. You know, I, I, everything what you're saying before that, I agree with you. Right. But you know, sometimes because we live in an unperfect world, Okay, so let me reply to that. We can we can look at that. We can look at that and say we understand that some. Yeah. So like so that. so let me reply to that. Yes. Because the brother raises a good point. We will live in an imperfect world that is full of sin, and we live in the West, which is a totally sexualized society. And so wherever you go, you're constantly being bombarded with sexual messages in the West, messages that constantly inflame our passions and make them rise and so inevitably in the church we have to recognize that our brothers and sisters are going to fall because they are going to give in to that sin that's inevitable the point of the christian is to think about how we organize our fellowships and organize society to reduce those possibilities and that looks like this. It means we need to desexualize society. Let's stop prostituting small children with clothes that objectify them. How many girls who are not even past puberty have you seen wearing miniskirts? Miniskirts were created by a woman who said she wanted women to be more, have um, easier access to sex in the afternoon. The reality is that we sexualize everything in our society and we need to desexualize our society because our society, you don't need, ladies and gentlemen, to inflame the natural passions. They're there naturally, they don't need to be inflamed and harming them harms us. When we inflame them, it harms our psychology. It harms our emotional structure. It harms our ability to maintain long-term relationships. Studies have shown that women, particularly women, I don't know why it lands this way, it just does, but women who have multiple sexual partners struggle to find long-lasting relationships. And that those women, and again, I don't know why it lands this way, it just does. But women who have fewer sexual partners have a greater success in having a long-lasting relationship. And by long-lasting, I mean decades, not two years or three years or four years or five years, 
which is what a lot of people in our culture think is a long-term relationship. The sexualization of our society has hurt our culture. We're not having children because people are pursuing sex, not pursuing family. And so we as Christians particularly must organize our fellowships so that people do not fall into temptation. And one of the best ways to do this is that we do not allow men and women to sit or work alone in our fellowships on a long-term basis. In a group, yes. In public, yes. But not in private. Why? How many scandals have damaged the church where a pastor or a priest has committed adultery or had an affair because they've built a relationship with someone in the quiet, in the private. And so interactions in church must be more like they were in the 1700s and before, where you would court someone, a man or a woman, in the full light of the public eye. So everyone would see, oh, these two are dating. Oh, these two are dating. And that families would form in the full sight of society. The individualism and the sexualization of Western society is damaging the church when we imitate it, and it is damaging Western society. Any other questions on the topic? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, going once, any questions? Sorry? You mentioned mental health? Yes. Um, I've been studying it myself. I'm so enthusiastic about, yeah, mental, I do my mental health. Basically. Okay, and what's your question, sir? Um, what's the church's standpoint on that then? Yeah, if we, if we as Christians believe that we should honour marriage, then that means we must do what we must do to defend marriage. That means that when there is an abusive husband, the brothers of the congregation perhaps need to take that abusive husband into the boxing ring and teach him what it's like to be hit every time he lays his finger on his wife. It means that when we witness people struggling in their marriages as Christians, we should get around and support them. And it means that when we see people struggling in their own mental health, as lots of women do after their first child, there's a whole condition connected to the depression that lots of women feel after they give birth. We need to be supporting families in our fellowships. Why? Because a marriage is a sacrament. When we have the sacrament of the Eucharist, we stick it in a safe. We honor it to protect it. So why aren't we doing those things necessary to protect the marriages in our community? As Christians, we're failing and we're failing because we have wedded ourselves to a way of doing church that doesn't work. The parish system does not work and we need to abandon it because we cannot support one another as we should or live out the Christian life as we should in the parish system. What we must do instead is to consolidate geographically in our tens of thousands and take over entire regions, counties and cities as Christians and then as a massive collective begin to rework what it means to be a Christian society and a key part of that would be to put families right in the middle of what that society looks like so we are supporting married couples and their children. And when we control those areas, we elect politicians that will pass laws 
to defend and support the family. Any other questions on the topic before I stop on this topic? So, as Christians, when we set up these Benedict communities, what we must do is evangelize the borders. Let's just say we take over, as the Muslim community have, they've taken over Tower Hamlets. Yes. They've taken over that area. Yes. It's a fact. Yes. There's no point denying it, right? They've taken it over. But if Christians say, for instance, take over the area of Acton, what we need to do is do evangelism in all the areas that surround Acton. And we need to send missionary groups. Now notice this, missionary groups in their hundreds, not one or two, because if you consolidate in your tens of thousands, then you have the numbers to send out hundreds into a neighboring area. And when you send out those hundreds and you make new converts, you either establish another Christian settlement in a new area or you bring your converts back to your stronghold. And this is how Christians will take territory. England does not matter to the church. The United Kingdom does not matter to the church. The European Union does not matter to the church. We Christians must organize ourselves in such a way that we guarantee that the church will be triumphant. And the parish system is not working. All that it is doing is eroding the church and so we must abandon it and adopt a better system. Any other questions on the topic? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. If there are no more questions, I'm going to go on to my next topic. I'm not going to project my voice as much, so if you would like to listen to my next topic, I want to invite you to move a little closer so that I don't have to project my voice, please. Because I've been doing it for over an hour and now my voice is a bit sore. 